in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4 the author writes in your struggle against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood you have forgotten the encouragement that is addressed to you as sons my son do not think lightly of the Lord's discipline or give up when you are corrected by him for the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he punishes every son he accepts this is found in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 4 to 7 when what you endure is for the sake of discipline God is treating you as son is there a son whom his father does not discipline now if you are without any discipline in which all sons share then you are illegitimate and not his sons furthermore we had earthly fathers who used to discipline us and we respected them for it we should even more submit to the father of our spirits and live shouldn't we for a short time they disciplined us as they thought best but he God does it for our good so that we may share in his holiness verse 11 no discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful later on however for those who have been trained by it it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace let's make some observations jot down some points from this passage spiritual discipline is something which God does which God does in the life of his children God disciplines those he loves disciplining or spiritual discipline is God's initiative and God's work our part is to submit to this disciplining it will be momentarily painful as any discipline is on the long run it will produce the fruits of righteousness peace and holiness it is only through this discipline we are going to be transformed and share in his holiness or become Christ like so this discipline is learning to live consistently according to the commands of Christ it's about how we think and act when no one's noticing when someone's noting, noticing or even if everyone is noticing in other words it's about being proactive with the commandments of Christ it's about living according to the commandments of Christ in the dark in the light in the church in the school college workplace everywhere everywhere many times we see that we are not the same in all these places You will recognize by now how we can never do it by ourselves and how only God can enable and empower us and discipline us. To encourage you further, I would like to share my example, my experience. I was caught up in so many sins even after I became a believer I had a forgiveness of sins but I did not have power over sin I was caught in internet porn I was, caught, I was uh, caught, uh, caught up in pride hatred lust of the eyes lust of the flesh uh, wrong cravings wrong motives wrong attitudes cursing inside if not outside there was no love for neighbor 
though I claimed to love God. And during these days I was uh, regularly reading my Bible, praying, but that was the only spirituality I had. But all other things which God expects were not there. I was of course very regular to Bible studies, worship, prayer, apologetics, but all these things had little impact because I was resisting God. I was resisting God's disciplining. And uh, so I became worse and uh, sin started dominating me and God in his infinite mercy again convicted me and slowly changed me, gave me power to overcome sin. And now I'm sharing this with you but because it is by the grace of God and the discipline of God over about a decade in my life that I reached the point where I can share this with you about true spiritual discipline and the need for it. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, Anyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave does not have a permanent place in the family. But the son has a permanent place. And so if, a, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. In the same chapter, in verse 31, he says, the Jews who believed in him, he tells them, If you keep my commandments, you will truly be my disciples. Then you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. They will protest. We are Abraham's children. We have never been anyone's slave. And Jesus replies, Anyone who sins is a slave of sin. And the slave does not have a permanent place in the family. And only the son has the place, permanent place in the family. And when the son, that is Jesus, sets you free, he will indeed be free. And the admonition of Jesus to which starts this backlash is that he is asking them to live according to his commands and truly be his disciples. 